What is up and welcome back to Talking Nutrition episode 40 already today. Can you believe it? We're uh Is it episode 40? It's episode 40, yeah. Awesome. Time flies when you're having fun, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Welcome back, Christine. I missed you last week. It's always weird to just talk into a microphone. Yeah, we had <laughs> I know I had some un unfortunate circumstances. Yeah. But Good, uh, good to see you back. So basically, I want to dedicate this episode to like your story and kind of like talking about your journey from competing to injury and kind of like what happened after that and you know all the way up till this point, really. Um, because I think, I mean, we both come from like a CrossFit background. We've seen that go hard mentality over and over again. It's still the case, mm -hmm. and we still do see a lot of people overtrain slash on the recover and it can have some consequences <laughs> you know big time <laughs> i mean yeah yeah of course you're you're speaking from experience <laughs> which we'll get into mm -hmm. as always if you enjoyed these episodes feel free to share them on your stories or feel free to drop us a quick rating on spotify or if you'd like to submit a question uh, via spotify directly or just the us, either way it's cool this episode is brought to you by Odyssey Coaching Systems, as well as KA Nutrition and Training. Before we get into it, Christine, do you have any updates that you want to share? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just feel like I'm in a good groove right now. I have a lot. I, well, I guess I'm coming out. Um, it's in the works right now. I'm building it out. Uh, more like a uh, basically like a new package for clients, um, more of a functional client, like functional nutrition client, cool. where like we're doing it's nothing geared towards fat loss or anything like that. It's dealing with like gut issues, hormonal issues. Um, so that's going to involve like testing, um, with lot like lab testing, GI maps, um, and things like that for people that have like really more complex cases. So I'm in the process of building all that out right now. Love that. That's cool. That's mm -hmm. smart mm -hmm. to kind of have that separate and also be like, Hey, we're not yeah. necessarily going to focus on fat loss. I like that. That's cool. Good. Yeah. There's probably, there's going to be probably no like macro tracking or anything like that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just going to be purely like health based and really getting people to the root of their issues. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have almost so. sort of like a, like a meal plan kind of approach or. Um, for part of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. just like specific protocols definitely will need that. Um, and then lead into, it's going to depend on the person, honestly. Of course. Yeah. But yeah. No, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Nice one. We also have yeah, a lot I'm of excited. stuff going on here. <laughs> like last weekend, I had two uh, seminars in person at two, uh, two gyms at the webinar yesterday, then launched our group coaching program, which is going to kick off on Monday, which will be when this episode launches. So it's been like a week or basically last two weeks of just like, a lot of stuff <laughs> and then now from today yeah, on like i can a lot like of back end again. stuff so much yeah, so much yeah because like yeah, same the the website stuff so i build that myself and in wordpress like it's great because you can customize everything i don't but, know how you do that <laughs> frick you're you're really good with that stuff but i used to use wordpress i had someone else have to do it for me because it was just uh, my mind would just yeah frick it was brutal i mean mine too but <laughs> i yeah. definitely had some <laughs> some long days but like now i'm in a spot where i'm like okay i'm good the the program got launched the checkup pages and all that kind of stuff like it works you know and now it's just kind of like good. okay normal work days again still a lot of work but mm -hmm. at least not like yeah all day and night you know i haven't trained for like two weeks either it's so it's so hard to keep up when you're like what I find is like when I'm doing back end stuff like that, um, I have a really hard time keeping up on uh, like Instagram posting and stuff. Oh yeah. It's like, that's where I start to struggle. 
Yeah, you like do but, you do you know later? This is maybe like a good one for fellow coaches to later.com or whatever it is. Like it's a scheduling software. I just have everything in there. It's great. You just drop okay. the photo, drop the text. I haven't heard of it. I'll send you the link. Like that's where I have everything. And to be honest with you, my whole month of April is already planned out per like you know time of the day three posts a day it's just all in there already so all i gotta do i get that notification post boom there you go super simple oh that's awesome it's almost like, almost like a meal prep with content you know but that's that's the thing and like i said that's why i wanted to bring this up right. for fellow coaches because exactly that stuff that's like hard to keep up with then you know it really is. So it's, yeah. it's nice to have something like that. It's a little expensive. It's like 50 bucks Especially almost. Especially when you're one person. Oh, 100%. That, that's the thing. But that's why it like works Like all hard. these companies have like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's, um, that's why it works so hard. So I can eventually take someone on and that's that's a plan, of course. Right. So Exactly. Uh, Got to work hard now to be able to lessen the load later. Yes. So anyway, how uh, how about getting into our topic, basically your journey, starting off with the competing side of things, right? Like you're basically like when things were going well, you were doing competitions, training was great, like you were doing well in terms of like your, your rankings and stuff like tell us about that. Yeah, so, well, so I started in 20 or 2008. Um, and I was in high school and I really didn't start to get competitive seriously until about 2012. And in 2012, at that point, there was really, you could not find competitions. Like they were happening like once a year, you know, really far away. Um, so there wasn't a lot of competing. Um, but what really got me on the scene was there was a competition in Toronto and it was invite only and it was, it was called best of the best. Um, and I tried out for it because they were bringing wild cards in and I made it and I ended up placing second in that, in that competition. That was really like my first, I'd say my first serious competition. And, uh, from there, like that's when I came on the scene and everyone was like, who is this? Like no one knew who I was at that point, but I had built a really, really solid foundation over those past four years of not competing. And that was the point. Um, and so I did really well. And then the next year I got invited, right? Because I did so well. And then that next year I won the whole thing. And so that's really when things started to pick up. Um, then in 20, I forget what happened in 2013. I don't think I, I just wasn't competing that year. I was just planning on, you know, continuing to build. And then in 2014 is when, I made it to regionals, Canada East, and I did really well in the open. I think I was top three. And then um, that competition was super interesting because that was like my very first like big, big competition, you know? <clears throat> and so like I was really inexperienced. Um, I didn't know how to like really handle the competition floor. Um, and would like get ahead of myself. Right. So like I would go really hard out of the gate. Um, and just because of all the adrenaline and all of that, but I ended up doing really well in, that, in, in regionals and I placed third. And that was when they only took two from Canada East. I think in California they were taking five and like, it just really didn't make sense. So I placed third and it came down to the very last workout and I, and I missed the games by like one point, I think it was. And after that was all said and done, there was like this world leaderboard of all the regional placings. And I was 10th in the world and not going to the games. And there was like 
women in like 120, just because of how it shakes out with the regions, there was women that were like a hundred and something and going to the games. And so that caused a pretty big uproar because they were, they were saying they were titling the fittest on earth, but like really the fittest on earth weren't, weren't there, right? Like I was definitely in the top fittest on earth and I wasn't going. And, um, so that was really devastating for me. Um, but it was an experience and it was, it was a good experience. Um, and so then I started gearing up for 2015 and I was training with Frazier out in Vermont and, um, I was doing box jumps and I was doing rebounding box jumps. Never do rebounding box jumps unless you absolutely have to. (laughs) They are very, very risky. Um, And I tore my Achilles when I was out there. And that was, I think that was like four weeks out of regionals. Because I did the Open in Vermont with him. Did well. And then um, went back out to Vermont to train with him again and then ruptured my Achilles then. And so that was like four weeks out. So I wasn't able to compete. Um, I was in a boot, got sur- I got surgery in Vermont and then flew home. So then some stuff happened. Um, you know, my recovery was really good and... I got back to to full health, but my sister's husband at the time was my coach and he was incredible, like so smart, um, really knew what he was doing, like keeping me away from, you know, overtraining and, and he was well ahead in terms of education than so many coaches out there. Like really people didn't start adopting what he was doing until like years later. Like people were like, what are you doing? Like, you know, they didn't understand. And then finally people started to catch on. Like he was just so smart. Um, and so they ended up getting a divorce and, we decided like we tried to work together for a while and like we were fine. It was just, it just started to get, it just didn't make sense. Um, and so I got a new coach and this is where things went crazy. So I didn't do my research enough on a proper coach and, um, I hired one based off of athletes that he had and not really knowing exactly like programming and all that. And honestly, like, I can't blame everything on him. Um, I need to take responsibility for what happened as well, but I really just had no knowledge. You know, I just didn't have the knowledge to understand. So, Um, anyways, I hired this coach and because I was so used to training in person with my other coach name was Graham, that's all I knew. And so I hired this coach and I moved out to California to be with him on site. And I think I was, you know, I started training. I don't know the exact timeline, but like switching from what I was doing to then going to this coach, it was a big difference. And, um, out there I was training, like I was training double sessions and, um, like those sessions were like, go hard or go home, always lifting really heavy always going a hundred percent like balls out. There was no, um, periodization with training, right? It was just CrossFit lift heavy, go all out. Whereas like with Graham, there was these periodized, this periodization. And like, there was times where I wasn't doing CrossFit at all. And so I was doing that for like five, six months. And then I really started to, feel not good. Um, but I was so 
into what I was doing because I had a one track mind of, I know I'm fittest in on this earth, like in CrossFit. And I absolutely know that I can make it to the CrossFit games. I've proven myself that I've been there. It just didn't shake out right because of the circumstances that they had in place or the whatever. Um, and so that was always in the back of my head. Like, I really know, like I deserve to be there. And so like, I was going to do everything I could to, to be there. Um, and so I think I just, you know, got lost in that hype and, and ignored a lot of the warning signs. I mean, I definitely had some times where I'm like, why am I doing, why do I feel like this? And so what was happening was I was getting injured like a lot. Um, and not like huge injuries, but like these kind of like minor injuries. And then there was bigger injuries within that. Like I did have like a pretty severe back injury where I couldn't even move. Um, and then just other like nagging injuries. And then I lost, um, my period for five months. Um, and again, lack of knowledge back then, just thinking that it was normal to lose your cycle when you're training like that. Um, and then I started, like, I got really, really, really puffy. Okay. So that is an indication of like adrenal dysfunction happening. Um, just getting super inflamed and I didn't know that. And then I started like breaking out on my, my skin was breaking out. My back was breaking out. Like it looked like I was doing drugs and like, it was really, really embarrassing and like just stuff that I never dealt with. Like I was started like, so this is when I, I basically got, um, adrenal PCOS. Like this is where that really started coming into play. Um, I would say it was like adrenal and inflammation PCOS, kind of both. Um, and so I got PCOS anyways, I, so all of that was happening and I was feeling like all of was feeling like that. And it was very confusing and frustrating. Um, and then it d- didn't matter. Like I still just pushed through and I made it to the California regional that year. So I was third seed going into California regional, which like, I have no clue how I did that feeling the way I did and going through what I was doing. Cause it was terrible. Uh, let me backtrack a second. So I will, when I like, I'll say like a lot of it was due to training. Okay. So there's definitely that aspect of, I for sure was overtraining. Okay. There's situations where you're under fueling and not overtraining, which we see a lot of, right. I was doing both. So I was over training and then I was working with RP and I'm going to name drop because I just am. I was working with RP and I was eating like no starchy carbs, like, like paleo type of eating, um, or like starchy carbs, like very intermittently, you know, and go ahead. (laughs) Was that the templates or, or the app or like, it was the templates. Because, um, I've seen that so often. I used to be in that group as well. And I used it, like the app. Uh, but this is, until last year, that was my last cut. In like 2020, I used them. And same, I don't really like name dropping. But like, I've seen so many people also in that group, literally being like, hey, How do I put together a meal with five grams of carbs? Like, what the fuck are we doing? And these people are lifting every single day almost. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's bad. Now, I will say, in their defense, it's an app. It's an algorithm. People are going with the most extreme goals and shit. And it's also that, right? So that that is an issue there. But still, um, it's it's, during that cut towards the end, I had to I had to quit. Mm-hmm. I had like three, four weeks left and I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like I was literally going like brain yeah. foggy where yeah. I, I could barely see shit, you know, because mm-hmm. it was so low. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, but it just sounds so familiar. So I was like, well, well, yeah, of course, like makes sense, you know? <laughs> totally. Yeah. I, uh, I've, <laughs> I've had many clients over the past five years come from them that I've essentially had to like, fix 
both mentally and physiologically, <laughs> like not good stuff. So, um, and like Johan said, I think there are brilliant minds behind that company for sure. Like there is very smart people, uh, but there's a, there's just an, a disconnect there. Um, anyway, so I was overtraining, I was under fueling and that's what happened. So I was in this just state of dysfunction internally. Um, hormones were a disaster. Um, cortisol, all of that. My adrenals were just revving like too much. Um, and so I made it back to California regional. And when you're in a state like that, a lot, what a lot of people don't understand is like you become very, even though you might feel strong, like tendons and all of that become very, can become very weak. Um, and like tendons, bones, all of that. So I got on the competition floor and I was in no state to be on a competition floor. Uh, but I obviously didn't know that. And on the first event, the very last snatch, so it was a snatch ladder that decreased in reps and increased in weight. And I was at 175, hit the first one, second one, it fell behind my back and I heard like in my shoulders. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like it hurts so bad. And I'm like, well, like I'm out here and I picked it, the bar back up and same thing happened. And I was in so much pain. And uh, it was like a nightmare because I had come back from my, my Achilles, done well in the open. I was on my comeback. There was a lot of hype around me. Okay, coming back because I had been so successful um, in the past, and that happened. And I was in the back, and I couldn't lift my arms. Like I tried to do like a handstand, and I had just like zero stability. Couldn't do anything, and so I had to pull out. And uh, that was the start of just this tornado. <laughs> I mean, the start of the tornado was when I started overtraining, um, because obviously it led me to, to the shoulder stuff. But, um, after that, I stopped working with that coach. Like I had to make the decision to just like, there's no way, there's no way. Like I just couldn't do it. Um, and I, started working with a doctor and I got blood work done. Um, and I was basically menopausal. So my hormones were like non-existent. Um, hence why I had lost my period and my cortisol was like just through the roof. It was just so, so bad. So I will say like with adrenal dysfunction, there's there's stages to it. So like first couple stages, like someone's adrenals will be like in overdrive or they'll be producing so much cortisol. So like they'll, they're kind of still on this, like they're riding this wave, but they might at night feel like, you know, wired or tired and not be able to sleep. Um, and then there's like stages like three and four where basically the adrenals tap out and they start producing less cortisol, not enough. So like, that's like adrenal insufficiency. Um, so I was definitely like riding that, that wave where like, I was just pumping out cortisol and like, you know, I think I, I did that for a lot of years, even following, um, my shoulders. So I had all this hormonal stuff going on. I actually had to take progesterone, bioidentical bio progesterone to get my levels back up. And then, you know, within that, I tried to do physical therapy for my shoulders and just exhausted that process and ended up having to get surgery. So I got surgery in California for on both my shoulders. Um, and then tried to recover from that was not recovering and then went to, um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the name of where I went. 
Cleveland. I went to Cleveland and saw like a really good doctor. So that was another mistake. I just rushed into surgery. Um, I also worked with a terrible physical therapist after. And anyways, I went to Cleveland and saw like a really, really good doctor. And he said like nothing was fixed in my shoulders. Like if I wanted any mobility when I was older or anything like that, um, that I would have to redo it. So I went in again. So I had two more shoulder surgeries. So trying to heal hormonally and then going through shoulder surgeries, like it's, you can't like, it's just the body's under too much stress. Right. So my recovery, um, with that was very, very long. And truth be told, like, I still deal with a lot, um, from my years of just destroying myself. Um, I've definitely come a long way. Um, but anyways, so got the second set of shoulder surgeries and then started working with active life. And they like, I'm telling you they're magicians. Okay. So they helped me so much. It was a two year recovery. Um, I have no pain. I have no mobility restrictions. Um, and so I made a full recovery and, you know, I still had that drive to like want to go and like get back to where I was. Like I pushed through all this recovery and like, it was nasty. There was like really dark times during that. Um, but I got through it and then I moved out to Salt Lake city to work with my coach, um, out there. And then I ended up competing in Italy for the last time in 2019. So I got injured in 2016 and then got back on the competition for 2019. Um, and then I hung it up in 2020 and that took me a while. So like 2018 to 2019, I definitely could feel myself starting to like detach a little bit, but, but couldn't do it. Um, and then after that competition, I started to reduce my training a little bit. And, uh, that, that happened over time. So I just still slowly started to reduce the amount I was training. And then I, did like an Olympic lifting competition and all of that. Um, and as that, as that progressed, I really started to realize like, this is not for me anymore. Um, and how terrible it was actually making me feel. So this is what I talk about with like adrenal insufficiency. So I was riding this wave like real high for so many years, like pushing, 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 pushing my adrenals. And when I stopped, it was almost like I got slapped in the face. Like there, there's two sides to this coin is what I always say is like, when I stopped, my quality of life improved in terms of like being more fulfilled and being able to do things and like having more freedom and not being so stressed about the training and the pressure and like, so, so much improved, but my health, my health definitely did not, it almost took, almost took a decline, um, for a while. And that's because of what you know, just hormonally what was going on after like training like that for so many years. And like the, the last few years, like I was eating 3000 calories. Like I really like reeled it in that way and definitely listened to my body a lot more, but I think I had just done a lot of damage there, um, previously. And so then I really started to deal with like a lot of gut issues Um, and that was like really disrupting my life. And so I've been on a journey with that for three years, um, still in it, honestly, like I've said this before, like it's progressed, um, and I've made improvements, but it's something that like, I'm constantly having to work at, um, 
just based off of the amount of stress and stuff that I did endure in those previous years. And like, this is a prime example too, of like, I endured a lot of stress from like training and I went through like a horrible breakup and there's like the, the surgeries with all of the, the, um, pain meds and everything. So it just wrecked my gut, but this can happen too with like life in general, people who go through like a lot of trauma and like all of that, they can deal with this type of thing. Um, and so I just, I really fell out of love with it, fell out of love with how I was feeling. Um, and it, I'm just, I'm so thankful for the years of it because it's why I do what I do today. Like truthfully, it's why, you know, I didn't want, I, I wanted to help people not go through what I went through. Um, and understand that they like don't need to be wrecking themselves in order to make progress in the gym. They don't need to be eating, you know, so few calories and just helping people with that. Um, and that's an issue, you know, that I see a lot of in the CrossFit space. Um, <clears throat> it's like they see these elite athletes and they're like trying to be like them and they're trying to be like them and eating like 1200 calories. It's like, well, those athletes eat 1200 calories in a breakfast. Right. And so there's like this, this disconnect. Um, and same with the training, like these athletes, that's all they're doing. And they really, I can't say for sure that they don't have other stressors, but like they're managed, they're minimizing their stress as much as possible. So they don't have like jobs and like, you know, different life stressors that a lot of us pe normal people, um, do. And so the effects of them, like the training that they're doing, they can recover from it that much better because they don't have all that stress and they're eating enough and they're sleeping and they're like, they're sleeping 10 hours. And like, you know, there's so much of that, um, which, <clears throat> It's just, I saw so much of that with just the, like the gen pop, um, going through what I was going through and they weren't even a professional athlete, but, um, yeah, it, it definitely the years of the training and the under eating, <clears throat> it, uh, definitely caused me a lot of issues that, you know, I still deal with those consequences today, but I, you know, I'll have these moments where I'll get upset about it. <clears throat> and then I remember like, literally I would not be right here right now if it wasn't for <clears throat> those years. So it's something I'm thankful for. In a way, it's cool to see that like, even though you had to go through so much shit, it kind of led to like a good place, you know, where you can now help people. Um, yeah, because exactly like you said, I remember this so well from working at the CrossFit gym where you used to work at like same shit, <clears throat> like you said, you know, not like real injuries, like in the beginning at least, but like little nagging little things, you know, and people are just getting sick a lot. Yeah. And then it's like, Hey, well, yeah, I, I got to keep working out this week because my back is just locked and, and then it's your shoulder. Yeah. Guess what? Like you're, you're studying and you're also working at the hospital doing night shifts. And you're living yeah. off energy drinks at night and you're not eating enough. You're also training like twice a day sometimes because one session is not good enough. Right. And it's, it's not even their fault, right? It's, it's a bit of the culture and it's, it's a lot of just that go hard mentality, which I like, I'm not even against, you know what I mean? Like, I think there's a time and place for that, but we do need to be smart and realize like, if you don't take those rest days, if you don't recover, like the body will do it for you. If you don't deload, yeah. if you don't have phases in your life where you actually take the time off, because guess what? Also professional athletes, they have an off season where they don't do fucking anything, right? They don't do anything. The, the, they'll not work out for like a month. Yeah. Like they won't go into the gym for a month. You and know? That's something you need to realize because if a professional athlete does that, right, they literally, they stop training and they, they gain weight sometimes, they gain body fat, whatever it is, you know, they just completely, this is a recovery 
season. Yeah. Why is it that, that us, let, let's call it like normal people, or our friends at the gym, whatever, why is it that we then expect, well, I can get away with that? <laughs> like, no, you can't. <laughs> and again, it's yeah, a matter it's of time. Funny. It, yeah, it's funny that you bring the this <clears throat> getting sick up because like it like, you know, when you're in that that state, yeah, your immune system, it's compromised. And that reminded me that during that period of time when I was in California and I was just in this dysfunction, I got allergies and I started like just, oh my gosh, it was so bad. And so like, this is where now I'm like, yup, like my, I was starting to see dysfunction in my immune system. Like every aspect of my being was, was being affected because I was training too much and I was not eating enough. And it's so funny because like, again, like I'm not blaming him, but like after the fact, when, you know, I realized what was kind of happening the coach tried to say like, I had all these stressors outside of the gym. I'm like, I had no stressors. <laughs> like I had no stressors. I was, like, that was my whole life. That was it. Like that was all I was doing. I would lived close to the gym. I would walk to the gym twice a day. I would come home, eat, sleep, go back. Like it, like there was nothing else. So imagine if I did it would be like, I don't even want to imagine that. <laughs> it would have been even worse. <laughs> oh, gosh. It would have hit a wall sooner. Yeah. But that's that's the thing, too. And we talked about this in the past where, sure, like, there is something to be said about coaches also not knowing everything all the time, not getting mm -hmm. the experience, not having the experience. And uh, without name dropping here, we are talking about, like, a bigger company. Um, so it's like, well, fuck. You know, how many other people are way overdoing it, right? And I know we do have fellow like CrossFit coaches on here as well listening. Like also as coaches, we do need to know, hey, we, we can't always go hard. We do need to have those rest periods, whether that's on a oh, weekly yeah. basis or season basis, you know? Because I know, I know that people at the gym want to go hard all the time. But yep. we can't always give people what they want as coaches because it's irresponsible because mm -hmm. sure you want to do the stuff that you like you want to do your workouts but at some point there needs to be a moment where we say hey now it's time to dial it back because guess what you know the open is just done and people are already now like oh, i'm gonna train for next year no you fucking don't you have to recover from the open I, first <laughs> you know yeah totally you don't stop to prepare for next season now like you take a break you know and you can still move, yeah. obviously. It's not like quit working out altogether, but like have your rest. You know what I mean? Like don't neglect mm -hmm. that. And like you will hit a wall. I hit a wall. I didn't even like compete, but like it was just, it was stress, lack of sleep, starting my business, you know, this one. And I was also working at CrossFit. I just burned out. And that is what happens. Yeah. That is what happens when you yeah. don't take a break. Yeah. And I like during that, during that season uh, in California, I I didn't, there was no deloads or anything involved. Like it was just straight through, lift all, all the weights, push to the limits. There was no deloading. Um, I had like one rest day a week. Um, and yeah, so then when I, after like, I learned so much in such a short period of time, uh, so when I switched coaches, we actually started deloading every four weeks because that kept me feeling good. Like injury wise, I felt good. And I would say that's like a short period, but it's what helped keep me healthy. Um, and so, yeah, I just, those like in gen pop, like people who are competing, but like not super serious like i do think that sometimes is neglected um because i have clients that i have to tell them to take a deload 
because they'll start feeling like low, low motivation. They're not recovering as well. You know, they're, you know, not, not sleeping well, like injuries are popping up. I'm like, well, when's the last time you took a deload? They're like, well, Rick, I don't know. It's like, well, let's do that. <laughs> and they do. And it's like, everything gets better <gasps> quickly. Yeah, quickly. And that's, that's a conversation that needs to be had. And this goes to our mm -hmm. fellow coaches as well as possible clients, you know, our clients, other people's clients, like that conversation needs to be had from like both sides need to be aware of that. And I wish that was kind of like common sense, but like the coach needs to say, Hey, let's dial it back. And us as people, we need to sometimes stop being so fucking stubborn <laughs> and moving yeah. away from, Hey, this is what I want. And kind of looking a little bit more of what I actually need. Right. Right. Because you can go yeah. hard at the gym again. It's not everything, you know, all the time, every day, whatever. Like we do need to have that rest. And totally. we just need to be realistic there. And I know, I know we want to work out. We want to do the fun shit. But again, you know, it's, it's between kind of like the things we want and the things we kind of know that we should do anyway. AKA resting more. Yeah, I spent uh, two years doing the most boring mundane training because I was recovering from my shoulder and gosh, <laughs> like I have the amount, how much I wanted to push and really, you know, get going. I'm so glad I didn't because I would not be, my shoulders went like so many people rush that process and then they end up with issues down the road. Like I see it all the time. People on Instagram asking me like, do you have pain? Like I had surgery and like I'm pain. I, my mobility sucks. And it's like, well, like, did you take the time to recover? Like you need to take those, those, um, situations slow. And if, like it, I know it's so hard to do, um, but it's essential. Um, and it's the same. It's it's just the same with like the resting and the deloading, right? Like it's not fun, but it is essential for you to to do that um, in order for you to progress forward and continue to to improve your performance. Yeah, let me just let me just ask a simple question, right? Like, let's say someone doesn't want to take the deload week. What would you rather have? You take it easy for a week now. And then you go back to training hard or you don't. And then in a couple of months, you have to take a break for a couple of months. You can't train at all because you fucked up, <laughs> right? You burn out. Yeah. You end up, you end up taking, you know, like 10 steps back. Yeah. It's not worth it. So no, I have a, a client who, who does CrossFit a lot. She's like very, very much into it. And, um, she went away for the weekend to Florida. And she was like, well, you know, about training and tracking and all that stuff. I was like, you know what? Let's just take a full break, right? You don't worry about tracking. Just focus on like food quality. Just got some steps in, whatever. Got some rest. Don't train at all. Because you've been going hard for a little while. She came back, felt great, you know? And then now she's actually PRing and stuff. So it's like, hey, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, I get the FOMO. Like, because I've had that, you know? I, I totally mm -hmm. understand. Like, I've, I've had that kind of like being like, well, fuck, I can't miss the daily workout because everyone else is doing it. So everyone else is progressing and I'm missing out on my gains. Well, actually, no. Like if you take that rest, like you might even come back stronger. I literally like, I remember PRing both my clean and my deadlift after two rest weeks where I just didn't train at all. I went oh. back to the gym, did a good warm up, and I just, and I did, it wasn't just like one kilo. It was like five or 10 or something each though. So. I was like, oh shit, you know, just because I actually recovered. So something to keep right. in mind, but I think, uh, I think I want to wrap it up because I actually do have to go and I know that you're going somewhere yeah. else. Well, mm -hmm. sounds good. That is it for episode 40. All right. I will see you next week or soon. Enjoy your weekend. Yep. Thanks yeah, for listening guys. You. And we'll see you soon.